Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and also welcome to those of you joining from my article over on Forbes as well. And today I'm going to be using some of the best hardware that I've reviewed over the last 12 months to build a $1,000 gaming PC. So if you've got around $1,000 to spend, you will almost certainly be wanting to add some or all of this hardware to your shortlist. So what I'll be doing is taking a look at every item here and uh, discussing other options if you've got slightly higher or slightly lower budgets and also just discussing why I've actually chosen each of these components as well. So without further ado, let's take a look at the hardware. Okay, so first up then is the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro, which is Corsair's brand new RGB memory. And uh, I've chosen this for this build because it looks absolutely awesome and uh, it's available in uh, a range of speeds. I've gone for the 3200 megahertz kit and uh, despite what it says on the box, um, I will be using a uh, 16 gigabyte dual channel kit, not the, not the quad channel kit that I've actually got here. Uh, but it's absolutely fantastic memory and um, yeah, it's going to look absolutely great in this build. So the Ryzen CPU that we've picked today does have a uh, processor cooler included in the box, but it's not particularly quiet or particularly great at cooling. So I've gone for a uh, very, very good value processor cooler in the Arctic Freezer 33 Esports 1, which includes a 120mm fan. It's uh, very quiet at low speeds and it offers excellent cooling as well. And next up then is the processor, which is the AMD Ryzen 5 2600X. Now there's obviously loads of processors out there at the moment, but this is one of my favorites due to the fact that you can get six cores, 12 threads, and a very fast CPU for a very, very low price. Now you can go for an Intel CPU, of course. They are slightly faster in some games, but with uh, the fast memory that I'll be using here, that difference is absolutely tiny these days. And uh, you'll be getting much more bang for your buck if you dabble in streaming or content creation as well. So here we've got one of the best X470 motherboards that I've reviewed this year and also one of the cheapest, which is Gigabyte's X470 Aorus Ultra Gaming. So for less than $140, you're getting full fat Realtek 1220 audio, six SATA ports, two M.2 ports, a whole bunch of fan headers and uh, USB 3.1 support as well. So uh, it will offer also a great overclocker if you'll be overclocking your CPU like I'll be uh, looking at later in this guide. And uh, yeah, it's a fantastic ball for the money and by far and away one of the best options for like $140 for an AMD X470 chipset motherboard. So you'll obviously be wanting to use an SSD in your build and why not go for M.2 because the Crucial MX500 is exactly the same as the two and a half inch version of this SSD. So going for the M.2 version, you'll be shedding all those cables and you don't have to worry about tidying, tidying them later. You get exactly the same speeds for exactly the same price. So this isn't going to be a crazy powerful build by any means, so uh, 550 watts of power is ample and for that I've gone for Corsair's extremely popular CX550M which offers 550 watts of power. Now this is a semi-modular power supply which means that you can remove some of the cables if you don't want to use them and um, it's also extremely good value. So this is very much a 1080p gaming rig and for that the best option is the GeForce GTX 1060. Now I've gone for the 6GB version of this card um, but if you've got a, a high refresh rate monitor or you want to have uh, maximum settings in all the modern games then you might want to consider the GeForce GTX 1070 but it is quite a bit more expensive. Uh, below this then you've got the 3GB version of this card which is still a very very capable 1080p uh, card and uh, also below that you've got the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti. So finally then we come to the case which is Corsair's Carbide Spec 04 which is a fantastic value case, it's extremely popular. It's got a side window, you've got some uh, funky front panel detailing going on here as well as a mesh so you get good cooling as well and uh, I'll be chucking in an extra fan just to help the, uh, the processor keep its cool at the rear of the case. So first of all what you want to do is to remove the socket mounting clips uh, because the cooler that we'll be using won't be making use of these. Some of them do, especially some of the all-in-one liquid coolers like those from Cooler Master. So you just want to whip these two clips off. It's very, very quick and easy to do. Nothing to be scared of, and that will reveal the four threaded holes. Once you've done that then, you can uh, then install the processor. So we've got our uh, AMD Ryzen 5 2600X, and uh, the easy way to uh, work out which way around it goes, because you've got a whole bunch of pins under here, but they only go in one way around, and that is to have the, uh, the logo pointing towards the memory slots here. So if you've got it around like this, I have the Ryzen logo, the top of the Ryzen logo facing towards the memory slots. And uh, all you need to do is just place it very gently on top. You, don't, you shouldn't need to force it or anything like that. And uh, then just, uh, press down the latch and you're ready to install your cooler. 
So next up is the thermal paste and uh, you need to do that before you install the cooler obviously and I like to apply a cross pattern as you can see here uh, because I think that provides, uh, well certainly there's certainly lots of evidence to, to, to suggest that it uh, provides the best spread underneath when you mount the cooler. So to mount the cooler then what I've done is uh, attach the AMD mounting brackets here to the, uh, the Arctic freezer cooler and uh, all you need to do is just plonk that on top of the processor like so and uh, line up the four holes and uh, as you can see, I've actually left the uh, the fan on there, but you will actually need to remove that just while you uh, just while you install the heatsink, and uh, move the fan to one side, and then you'll just want to use these uh, these four screws that come with the cooler to uh, secure it to the motherboard. So there we are. Then our processor cooler is installed, and uh, what I've done is just uh, connect the fan header down there to the CPU fan header on the motherboard, and then just tuck the uh, the cables in behind that heatsink there. So. That is the uh, the motherboard nearly ready to install in the case, but the next thing we need to do is install the M.2 SSD. So here's our shiny Crucial MX500 M.2 SSD, and what we're going to do is just slot it into the uh, the top slot there, ready for the uh, the heatsink to be attached on top. So uh, that's nicely slotted in now, and uh, here is the heatsink. It's got a thermal pad underneath, which is pre-applied, so you don't need to do anything other than just screw this into place like I'm doing now, and. Um, that just slots down there like that. Everything holds everything else in place. And then it's just a simple question of using that screw. I'm gonna do it easier said than done when I'm on camera when I'm on camera. <laughs> and uh, there we go. So that's all securely held in place and uh, we're now ready to install the motherboard. So we've got Corsair's awesome Vengeance RGB Pro memory. We've got two modules, so we're gonna install them into slots two and four on the motherboard. Now slot four is the one furthest away from the processor cooler. So we're just gonna slot those in there like so. And uh, if you're not sure which way around your memory goes, basically you just want the uh, the shorter lip here on the memory to go at the bottom like so. So we're just gonna uh, slot that second memory module in. Nearly there. And now we can look at installing the power supply. So as you can see, I've now got the uh, power supply installed down here, really easy, just a few screws uh, that you need to uh, screw into the back of the case. And I've also installed the 24-pin uh, ATX connector here by routing it around behind the motherboard. And the 8-pin EPS 12-volt connector, that's now connected to the motherboard up here, again, routing it around the back of the motherboard too. So we're now ready to install the graphics card. So here is our uh, GTX 1060 six gigabyte from Palette, and uh, we're just gonna install that into the top PCI Express slot. That's the, uh, the larger of the slots there. And um, that should just slot into place, nearly there. So that's now slotted into place, and it's always worth using the rear screws as well just to hold that in place, especially if you'll be moving the PC. So that's that now screwed in place, and we can uh, hook up the rest of the power supply cables. So the great thing about using an M.2 SSD is that we've just got one power supply cable extra that we need to connect to the graphics card. There's no SATA cables, uh, either power or data cables for the uh, for a SATA SSD because we essentially don't have a two and a half inch SATA SSD to deal with, which is great. So what we all need to do is just to uh, connect this to the graphics card. So the uh, GTX 1060 that we're using uses a single six pin connector that you can see there and uh, that just slots into place like so, and then we can um, deal with all these cables and do a bit of cable tidying, which I'll do in just a second. So here's the rear of the PC. I've just done a super, super quick job to uh, tidy up some of the cables, and uh, just flipping it round, we're uh, pretty much ready to uh, call this build a wrap. So there's maybe one drawback of this case, which is that it only includes a 120 mm fan, and that's in the front. And it's also very, very important to get the heat out of your case as well. So what I've done is I've just added a, uh, another 120 mm Corsair fan to the uh, to the rear of the case, and I highly recommend um, that that's what you do as well, because it not only gets air out of the case, but it also um, aids the processor cooler uh, in, dish in getting, kind of getting rid of its airflow. It actually aids the cooler in cooling your CPU as well. So that's pretty much it for the build and let's have a look at some final photos. Okay, so we are finally there with this build. We've uh, finally finished our $1,000 gaming PC and uh, a whole bunch of people I need to thank for this, uh, starting with AMD for sending me the Ryzen 5 2600X. 
Then we've also got Gigabyte for its X470 Auros Ultra Gaming motherboard, to Palette for its GeForce GTX 1066 Gigabyte Dual, uh, to Crucial for the SSD, uh, to Arctic for the Freezer 33 Esports 1, and finally to Corsair for sending me the Spec 04 PC case, CX550M power supply, and also in a Vengeance RGB Pro memory. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the build. If you wanna see uh, a bit more detail on how the build comes together, you can check out my Forbes article, which is at the uh, in just above the comments. And also I've laid out every single product that I've used here today, which you can buy over on Amazon with direct links below. So don't forget to subscribe and uh, watch out for my other videos.